So let's say that we're studying a piece of biochemistry, right? A step in a pathway that takes some substrate and turns it in to some product. And it is entirely possible that there is just a single enzyme that is responsible for completing this step. But it is also entirely possible that there are more than one enzyme in here and we just don't know the biochemistry of this process well enough to know that there is some additional intermediate here that we haven't found yet. And so we can try to answer this question by making multiple mutants that all affect this reaction, all affect this step in a process. And so let's say that we create four mutants that all disrupt the production of P when we feed this organism some of the substrate. And so the next thing we need to do is we need to cross these mutants somehow. And so um, what we want is we want both of these mutated genes to end up in a single organism. And often, like in, in some organisms, that's as easy as just breeding together these two different strains. Um, in other organisms, it's a little on the harder side, but if we can say cross mutants one and two to give us one comma two, what do we get out of crossing these two mutants? So let's consider two different possibilities that these mutants have a mutation in the same gene or the possibility that they have mutations in two different genes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this out like this, where mutant number one, let's say that here is the gene that is mutated, and in mutant number two, here is the gene that is mutated. And so if there's just a single enzyme that, um, that catalyzes this reaction right here, then both of those genes encode for that enzyme that turns the substrate into the product. However, if both of these genes have a mutation in them, let's say there's a mutation there and a mutation there, then we won't get any of this enzyme made, right? There's not a functional copy of this gene around to make functional enzyme here, and we won't see any product made. So that's the case where there's just one gene here. What if we've got two genes? Well, we actually still have two different possible scenarios we could be talking about. So in mutant number one, Let's say that's gene number one, and this is gene number two. And in mutant two, here's gene number one and gene number two. And again, let's say that those genes encode for enzyme one, those genes encode for enzyme two, and now the substrate it's used by enzyme 1 to make an intermediate, which is used by enzyme 2 to make a product. So let's imagine that mutant 1 has a mutation there, and mutant 2 has a mutation in that same gene, right? The gene that makes enzyme 1. And so in this case, we're still not going to have any of enzyme one properly made because both copies have mutations that are preventing it from being made. And so we won't get any of the intermediate and we won't get any of the product. And compare that to the scenario where those mutations are in different genes. Perhaps you can already see where this is going.
So if again, these two genes make enzyme one and enzyme two, which turn substrate into an intermediate, into a product. Now, if mutant one has a mutation in gene one, there's still, and, and mutant two has a mutation in gene two, there's still a good copy of gene one to make enzyme one. And there's still a good copy of gene two to make enzyme two. And so in this scenario, even though we started with two mutants that could not make this product, when we crossed them together, we ended up with a cross. We ended up with an organism that can. And so in this scenario, we say that these two mutations have complemented each other. Right, I've taken mutation one and mutation, uh, mutant one and mutant two, and when I've put those two mutations together, I end up with a functional pathway. And this is why we need multiple mutants. Because if I start with like all four of these and I make all of these crosses, I can get enough information, I can gather enough information to try to start determining if I'm in situation one here, where I've only got one gene that does this, or I've, if I'm in situation two, where I've got two of these genes. And so we call this, this kind of set of experiments a complementation analysis. And so let's say I've got these four mutants. Let's go ahead and draw a table of mutants one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And so in this table, I'll put a minus if a cross between these two strains will grow, will have this functional biosynthetic pathway. And of course, if I cross um, um, one individual from strain four with another individual from strain four together, I will end up with the same gene that is busted because it is the same mutation in both of these two strains, similarly all the way down the diagonal of this matrix. But now let's say that if I cross one and three, it's negative, but two and four do grow, right? one and two complement each other, one and four complement each other. Similarly, if I've got, I cross two, strain two and strain four, they don't grow, but two and three cross together grow. Three and four cross together grow. This kind of analysis, if I'm looking at this data, I note that mutants one and three, right? There's a negative sign here. They don't complement each other which means that they must be mutations in the same gene. However, mutant one and mutant two, mutant one and mutant four do complement each other, which means that they must be mutations in different genes. And so we call one and three, we call two and four, complementation groups, which is to say that mutants that make up a complementation group where they don't complement each other, they do complement other mutants in the same process, we know that th these two mutants have a mutation in the same gene. These two mutants have a mutation in the same gene, and this gene and this gene are different genes because they do complement each other. And so, two closing notes for this kind of analysis. First, this can show us that we have at least two genes involved in turning S into P. Why not exactly two genes? Well, I only made four mutants. If I made 10 mutants, perhaps I would find another complementation group. And second, We've been pretty breezy with this word mutation. We know that it's something that changes DNA. 
We know that the change in DNA can disable one of these enzymes, and we know that enzymes are proteins. We know that the instructions for those proteins are encoded in DNA. And so how exactly do those instructions, how exactly are those instructions encoded? That's the topic for our next video, which is on the central dogma.